Welcome to English for You Now. I am Vaughn Packard, one of the co-authors of this program and this curriculum. The other co-author is a professor, Glenn Probst, who is a renowned expert in English as a second language and English as a foreign language. He has been developing curriculum and teaching and teaching teachers for f over 50 years. I have worked with him for approximately 20 years in developing programs that have been used with students all around the world who are certifying their English capacity through the ACTFL program, the American Council on Teaching of Foreign Languages. This program that we have developed is even better than the prior one that we did. It takes advantage of everything that we learned before and puts it all together. Tonight we want to give you an introduction about the program and the curriculum. We want to also show you how it can be taught and we want to show you the unique aspects of English for you now. One of those unique aspects to begin with is pronunciation. In the very first module of the 18 modules we teach pronunciation and focus on those sounds that exist in English which don't exist in most foreign languages. So I'll demonstrate some of those for you and my students here will help us in demonstrating how they learn as well. The first one would be the a ah sound. Not ah, but a. Ah. A ah as in bat, playing baseball. Or the little, little animal that flies in the night that we try to avoid called a bat. Okay, so it's bat. Then there's cat. And then if the cat eats too much, the cat becomes fat. Okay, so fat is another word that rhymes with it. And then hat. And when we say hat, a little bit of air should come out of our mouth and we can put our hand up to our mouth and we can feel the air coming out with the H, hat. And the last one in this series is rat. This is not a real rat, this is a fake rat. So don't worry about that. Usually I toss these to the students. But let's practice these with the students now and show how it can be effectively done. Sometimes for those who speak foreign languages, they say bot instead of bat. They say caught instead of cat. They say fought instead of fat. So we'll practice the sounds uh, tonight here in, uh, in a series. So bat. 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 Cat. Cat. Fat. Fat. Fat cat. Fat cat. Very good. Rat. Rat. And hat. 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 Okay. Hat. Hat. Very good. Okay. I hear everyone pronouncing it right. If I didn't hear it right and I heard hot, then we would just practice it a little bit more and in time the students get it. What I find is that to begin with, the students can't even hear the difference between hot and hat. And over time, practicing it for a couple of sessions, they begin to hear the difference. Then they try to pronounce it right and say the a ah instead of the ah. They finally get it. And they learn how to make the sound with their mouth and their lips and their tongue. And then we have to use those sounds over and over until it becomes routine. Okay, so let's go to the next set of words. This set of words deals with the sound e, eh, as in pen. 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 It's pen, not pain. Pain means it hurts. Pen is something that we write with. Ben is the name of a man, okay, and it rhymes with it. See, as you see, we're using monosyllable words to teach these sounds, so it makes it easy for the students the end of something. The hen, which is the female chicken. Okay. Now if we were in a real class, I would be throwing these out to the students. They would say it and then they would throw it to another student and they would say it. The next word in our list is send, as in sending the mail or sending a letter. Send. And the last one is the number 10. Ten. Written like this, okay? So now let's start back at the beginning here of this list. Repeat after me, please. Ben. A pen. Pen. Ben. Ben. 
Rain. End. End. End of the pen. End of the pen. Very good. Hen. Hen. Hen with a pen. Hen with a pen. <laughs> okay. Send. Send. And we pronounce the D at the end, as you notice. Send. 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 Very good. In some languages, the D is not pronounced as a hard D at the end. Ten. Ten. Okay, very good. Now we're going to do them in nice sequential order, one after another, uh, more rapidly, okay? So, pen. Pen. End. 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 Hen. Hen. Send. Send. Ten. Ten. Excellent. Very good. Okay. As you can see, these are very good students, and they've learned well, and uh, they're giving a good demonstration here. Now there are several other sounds that are unique in English to many of the other foreign languages and I'd like to show you some of those sounds uh, and uh, although we're not going to take the time to practice them here as, uh, as students. Um, some of them are like pig, wig, dig, fig that you eat, or big. And uh, all of those are an E sound. They're not an E sound. So it's not pig or big or dig. It's pig. Dig. So follow after me, please. Pig. Pig. Dig. Dig. Fig. Fig. Wig. Wig. A wig is what we wear when we've lost our hair, right? A wig. 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 Excellent. Okay. All right. Now let's see some others that. Uh, uh, are unique sounds uh, and we'll practice some of those as well. Now this is mop. Now you see that um, mop is an M-O-P but we pronounce the O as though it were an A for an A. So it's a mop that we clean the floor with. Mop. Mop. Top. Top. Hop. Hop. Pop. 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 Shop. Shop. A retail shop. I read it all shop. Very good. Okay. Then when the students learn how to make these sounds, then we apply them to all of these different words, vocabulary, and then we can play with the grammar and learn together. The next um, unique aspect of English for you now is that uh, you probably heard that there are common verbs uh, for various languages, and you could select two, three, four hundred verbs but the truth is, we use much less than that on a regular basis. So Professor Probst and I selected the 58 most commonly used verbs. And we ask our students to learn those verbs, and we practice them over and over. We learn the proper pronunciation, we learn their meanings, then we learn how to conjugate them. When they learn those verbs, they get the biggest bang for the buck they get the biggest result for their effort. And that's a payday. And as they get that payday, then they say, I'm learning. I can keep learning. I'm progressing. I can feel it. I can see it. I can begin to communicate, and I can begin to understand a lot more. So we'll uh, show you now a list of the 58 most common verbs, and then I'll show you how we like to teach those. Almost all educational experts say that the best way to learn um, uh, anything is if you physically can get involved in it and maybe even acting it out. And that process internalizes the learning. So looking at those uh, verbs, let's take the verb speak, okay? Uh, we teach the students to uh, motion and gesture the person involved in saying the word speak. Now I have to make certain I have enough room here to move about. So I'm standing here and we have them stand as well. We're not going to do that here in the studio, but we have them stand. We stand in the neutral position which is the present. So I'll say, I speak. Then we speak. We'll get to you in just a minute. Students, see how eager they are? I love it. Okay? <laughs> when they're enthused and they're smiling and having fun, they learn. And it's not painful. It's very fun. Very fun and they help each other. I, uh, I speak, you speak, we speak, they speak, he speaks, she speaks, it speaks. 
Now the cat doesn't usually speak, but the class speaks. And the class is an it because it's not a he or a she. And it's a singular, okay? If it were classes, it would be a they. Now, why do I emphasize that? Because when it comes to the third person singular, you add an S. So it's, the students can give the gestures along with me now, and I'll take you through the various ones, okay? I speak. I speak. You speak. You, you speak. We speak. We speak. They speak. They speak. They speak. He speaks. He speaks. She speaks. She speaks. The class? The class speaks. Excellent. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we also teach them that the various other tenses are really very easy. For example, to form the future tense, we put a will in front of the verb. We don't add an S. Don't do any of that. Just put a will in front of it. So I step forward. They step forward into the future. I will speak. I will speak. They will speak. You will speak. We will speak. He will speak. She will speak. The class. The class will speak. So it doesn't change. It's very easy. It's easier than most other languages. Then we step back into the present, and then we step back one more time, and we're in the past. Now, speak is an irregular verb. So it's, I spoke. I spoke. I spoke. You spoke. We spoke. They spoke. He spoke. She spoke. The class. The class spoke. And it doesn't change. It's very easy. If you want to learn English, you can learn English. If you want to learn to pronounce English better and be better understood, you can learn. All you have to do is believe that you can do it. It's all in your attitude. If you don't believe you can do it, you can't do it. But if you believe you can do it, you can get it. You can learn to pronounce it properly. You can learn to be understood. You can understand others. And the world opens up for you. It's fabulous. Here in the United States or wherever, wherever else, we invite you to participate in the additional series of uh, the channel programs on this subject. We also invite you to come to the free classes uh, that are taught uh, the first week in September, Tuesday and Thursday nights, and uh, come join these students who will be helping you as you learn English. Good luck and enjoy it. It's a wonderful experience learning English. Thank you.